These are my top 10 features for the new Microsoft Edge browser. The first feature is something that's pretty new and it's called vertical tabs. So these are horizontal tabs. We've had them in browsers forever. Well, right here in the upper left, there's a turn on vertical tabs and watch what happens. I click this and all my tabs disappear from the top and they're on the left here and they can pop out. So I can switch between tabs really easily, just like this. I can pin it if I want to keep it open. I just want to see them all the time. I can create a new tab just like I do normally right here. It just appears underneath and then I can close it just like that. If I want to go back to horizontal tabs, I click right here and they're back again. I'll show how to turn it on with settings really quick. So if you go to the dot, dot, dot menu and down here choose settings and then go to the appearance tab, what you'll see is this show vertical tabs button. And if I turn it off, you'll see in the upper left vertical tabs disappeared, turn it back on, it reappears. And if you don't have this build yet, you can go to the Edge Insiders page and get it. And I'll show what that looks like. The link is right here and this is in dev channel, but should be rolling out broadly in the near future. Feature number two is my very favorite in the world, which is the immersive reader as well as read aloud. So I'm here on any old web page, and I'm going to select some text and I want to hear that read out loud. So I'm going to select some text here. I'm going to right click and choose read aloud and you'll see word and line highlighting. As a veteran teacher, I usually had a pretty good idea. How so this is any web page. You can select text and read aloud. You can also change the voice options right here. You can drop that down, make it go faster or slower, choose a different voice. I've got the neural text to speech voice, which is really, really nice. Now, even more powerful is the full immersive reader, though. I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to select a chunk of text right here. I can select any text on any web page, right click and say open an immersive reader. Now you get the full immersive reader. So I can still read aloud like we did before, but I'll go to text preferences and maybe I want to increase the text spacing. Maybe I want to make the text a bit bigger, change the background colors. We've got lots of different colors based on what you might want to choose. I'll keep it on black here. I can even break words into syllables. Maybe I'm someone who's a non-native speaker. Maybe I have some challenges with reading. Maybe some people with dyslexia, this can be helpful. I can highlight different parts of speech like nouns and verbs and adjectives. I can also go to reading preferences and do things like line focus. So focusing my eye on just a few lines, I can choose three lines or five lines. Got one line here. You can even navigate with these little arrows down below. And lastly, I have picture dictionary and translate. So I can go click on a couple of words here and get a picture of it. So I click on education here, click on parents, and I can even translate. So if I want to translate this page, we support over 40 languages. Maybe I want to translate to French here. I will say translate the entire page. And now I can go read aloud. En tant qu'enseignante chevronnée. So incredibly powerful and inclusive technology. Up here, I click the little exit immersive reader. The shortcut key is F9, and I can go back to the regular page. The third feature I'm going to show is a really cool one that's recently rolled out, and I'm going to show how to turn it on. This is QR code generator in Edge. So if I go into Edge and I type edge colon forward slash forward slash flags, like I've shown here, it's going to load up this experiment. And what I'm going to do is search for QR code. Enable sharing page via QR code. And I'm going to drop this down and you're going to set it to enabled. And we're going to turn on that QR code generator. You'll have to restart your browser really quick. So I'm going to click restart here to show. I've restarted my browser and now I'm on a blog here. Let's say I want to share this out as a QR code. Maybe it's a link for a PowerPoint presentation QR code. If I click on the address bar, now you're going to see right here, there's a little QR code looking icon. If I click this, it has the QR code generated and ready to go. If I just click download, it goes to my downloads folder. I can get it out or I can just screenshot this. And if I don't want this URL here, maybe I decide I want a different URL. I can just type in and you can see it's updating as I type. The fourth feature is collections in Edge. This is pretty new. It rolled out recently and I'm going to go here and click plus. This helps with researching, capturing, and organizing information all across the web. So I'm going to say start a new collection, and it lets me drag in pictures or content or pages. So let's say there's a blog here on remote learning. I'm just going to say add current page. That's the most basic. And it puts a nice little link with an image to that page. 
Maybe I'm on this page here and I find something that I want to drag over. There's an image here. I'm just going to drag this over. It adds that image. And maybe there's some content here. I just want to select some text and I can drag this over as well and drops it right into that collection. And then lastly, I'll go right here. Maybe there's a PDF I'm looking at and I want to take a sticky note and here is my note and I click the checkbox. So I've got a link, I've got images, I have text, I have a sticky note and I'll give it a name and hit back. Now I've got a collection, I can create multiples. Now one really powerful thing is when you're done with your collection, you can save it. So if I click the dot, dot, dot menu. I can send it to OneNote, my favorite app, send to Word, send to Pinterest and lots of other places. So it lets you save those collections out after you're done researching. The fifth feature is the new web capture. So if I go to the dot, dot, dot menu right here, you're going to see web capture. That lets me screenshot and annotate anything really quickly. So let's go to a site and I'm going to do a little screenshot. Here we go here. Maybe I want to screenshot this. We'll say control shift S. That's the hot key. It pops up a little toolbar here. I can say full page or free select. Let's do full page first. And what this does is it just actually snapshots that entire page. And if I want to draw on it, I can do that. Choose that maybe red. Maybe I want it to be thick and I'll go here. I want to circle something, do the old uh, point arrow to it. It's really easy. I can erase that and now I can save it. I can copy this. I want to paste it somewhere or I can share it and I can share that out. So a lot of different options for web capture. Now I'm going to close this and I'll say not saving. I did the hotkey, but you can also just go right here and say web capture in the same way. And in this case, I'm going to say free select. So what this is, is I can click with my mouse and drag something like this and I let go. And at the bottom right here, it says I can copy or I can add notes. So if I want to copy it into an email, I can do that. We'll choose add notes. This gives me those same options as before. I can draw on this. I can free select. I can do whatever I need to do. So that is the web select feature and that is fully rolled out now. The sixth feature I want to show are profiles. Profiles and Edge are really handy to keep your work and your personal life separate. So you might have a set of sites and logins and all sorts of things that you do in your personal life and then you might have another set of favorites and resources and logins for your work life. Now to access this, you just click on your icon in the upper right and it lets you manage profile settings. I've added a couple profiles here. I'm in my work profile now, but if I want to launch my consumer profile, I just click here and it launches Edge in a whole new window. And down at the bottom, you can see there's a whole new window that launched. And I've got some different add-ins up here. This is my personal profile. I have my personal favorites. I've got my office extension. I have Wakelet. I have some other things. So this lets me keep these completely separate in two different browsers. And especially if you're working in an area that's pretty secure and something where you don't want to mix together work in your personal life or school teachers and your home life, this is a really nice and time saving way. And I can switch between those back and forth in a really easy way. And you can add multiples. I have one of my demo accounts added here as well that I can switch to when I want to do demos and recordings. The seventh feature is the powerful privacy settings that keep you safe and secure when browsing. Now I'm going to go over here to the dot, dot, dot menu and we're going to choose settings to open up edge settings. And what you're going to do is go to privacy search and services. Now for valuing the privacy, there are some great tracking prevention options. Balanced is recommended, which it blocks a lot of trackers. Things will mostly work as expected and it keeps you in a nice balanced state between basic and strict. Basic is a little more dangerous if you want to live on the edge out there, but strict is a great one. And it's pretty hardcore, but it blocks a ton of the trackers. They won't be tracking you all around the web. And you can actually explore the blocked trackers right in here if you want. And you can give exceptions. The eighth feature is working with PDFs in Edge, both for read aloud as well as annotation. Many educators ask, how can I have my students use read aloud on a PDF? Well, if I open this PDF right here, I've opened it with Edge and I've set this to the default for PDFs. I click read aloud leveling the playing field with Microsoft learning tools. So I get the full read aloud right on that PDF. 
I can also do a draw. So again, just like I was doing before, I can choose draw. We'll make it a little bit thicker and I can circle things. I can annotate my PDF and it's very easy to do annotations. And then when I'm done, I can click save and I can save a copy of that PDF with my annotations. So Edge has a great built-in PDF reader with read aloud and annotation. The ninth feature is the ability to sync all of your extensions across your Edge browsers. If I've got a laptop and a desktop and something else across my different devices, I can sync all that information across all of them, including my extensions. So if I go here into my profile, right now you can see that sync is turned on. I'm gonna click manage profile settings to show where this is. If I go right here to sync, I'm gonna click this here. And you're gonna see all of these are turned on. I'm syncing my favorites, I'm syncing my different settings, my browser settings. And if you go down here, you can sync extensions as well, even collections that we showed earlier. And so this is really nice to be able to have all of your information across all of your devices. And when you go up here, usually you'll get prompted to ask if you wanna sync across profiles. But if you said no at some point in the past, just make sure you go into profile settings right here, go into sync, and turn all of these different things on. The last thing I'm going to show is dark mode in Edge. If I go to appearance right here under settings, I go right here, can drop this down and choose dark. Hey, that is easy on the eyes, really nice, really easy to set up. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you wanna keep up with all the latest quick tip videos that I'll keep releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get notified for all the new videos that post.